want you to think that I went over there and embarrassed the county by what I was wearing. I looked very good. I got help from my friend, Jane Tucker, from New York City. She has a daughter, 6'4", so she knows how to help tall people find some clothes. She came down here to go through my closet and tuckerize me for pageant week. <laughs> and she said, trying to line up all of my clothes, do you have a pashmina? I said, I don't think so. I've had all my shots. <laughs> She said, no, Jeannie, a pashmina. You wear it when it's not too cold and not too hot. It's just something that you have on. I said, well, we wear little sweaters for that. <laughs> she said, you need one. I'm going to send you a black one. Left brain said, don't let her do it. Don't let her do it. She's going to send something from New York City. There's no telling what this is going to cost. <laughs> well, the pashmina came. I just want to know for my information. Y'all know what it is? It's a shawl. It is a shawl like our grandmother had. Left brain looked right at it. He said, name it a pashmina, raise the price on a shawl, send it from New York City. <laughs> I said, stop going in circles. It's apparent you don't know the style in New York City. But when I put it on, it wasn't stylish like I had seen Jane. I just put it on, it was a shawl. Next time I was with her, I saw why. She doesn't just put it on, she puts it on. <laughs> She swirls that pashmina and takes this side, tosses it over this shoulder, and flips up her chin. She tosses it over this shoulder, and flips up that chin. So I was standing in front of the mirror trying to do this. Left brain said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, you don't know the style in New York City. Leave me alone. But when I flipped it up here, it kept falling down. So I called Jane Tucker and I said, Jane, I think my pashmina needs a little snaps up here to keep it in place. She said, it doesn't need snaps. What you need is an attitude. When you toss, flip it over your shoulder, you stare at your shoulders. It wouldn't dare come off. <laughs> so I swirled that thing and toss, flipped, and toss, flipped, and then I stared them down, buddy. Left brain says, I said, you don't know the style in New York City. I got a speech in New York City, and I called Jane Tucker, and I said, just make sure I'm in style in New York City. What do you think I ought to wear? She said, black, nothing but black. Did y'all know this in New York? Black, she said, it's a dirty city. I said, I've always heard that. I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> she said, no, people go to work, then they go to the theater and they go to dinner. They keep on the clothes all day, cars riding by cabs, splash your stuff on. If you wear pale colors like you women do in the South, you'll be dirty by three o'clock. Wear black, bring your black skirt, your black sweater, jewelry, your black slacks, and don't you forget that black pashmina. I had it all out. Jerry was packing his stuff. He said, what is all this black? I said, this is all I'm taking. He said, has somebody passed? <laughs> Are we going to a funeral in New York City? I said, you don't know the style in New York City. You just get your clothes, but don't stand near me. <laughs> the night before my speech, they had a reception in the hotel across the street. We were to go. I wore my black skirt black sweater, jewelry, and we were leaving. And I said, wait a minute, let me get my black pashmina because when we come back, it will be nippy. And we went over and went up that escalator to the mezzanine level. They had a big portrait of their keynote speaker and I had on heels, which made me 6'4". Everybody knew who I was. And if there's one thing we do know how to do in the South, it's floating around the room. I went around meeting everybody. And after about an hour, I came back over to the left brain. And I said, it's time for us to leave. Let's move over toward the escalator. And when we got up there to the top of it, I said, back it up. I'm going to put on my pashmina. <laughs> and I swirled that thing around, and I tossed, flipped, and I tossed, flipped, and I stared it down, and it wouldn't have moved. And down the escalator we went. People came looking over. I gave them my pageant wave. Got to the bottom of the escalator. A woman came up and said, excuse me, why do you have a pair of black slacks wrapped around your neck? <laughs> I couldn't speak, but left brain could. He said, because it's a dirty city. <laughs> she said, there's a zipper hanging down your back, wide open at the waistband here. I had taken that right leg and thrown it over here. 
the left leg and thrown it over there and stared him down. She says, it looks like a man or something was sitting on your shoulders and fell over and just slid out of the pants. I don't even remember leaving the hotel. The next thing I knew, we were out on the street and I was holding it on to the building. Left brain was fanning me. I was about to pass myself. And I said, I just cannot believe this is happening. And right there is when I talk about accepting things you can't change and keeping a smile on your face. Because right there, he said, I thought it looked funny when you put it on. <laughs> you saw that I had a pair of black slacks wrapped around my neck and a zipper standing wide open? And you didn't think anything was wrong? And that's where his left brain kicked in on it. He said, I did think something was wrong. I thought it should have been zipped. <laughs> well, it gets worse. Going across the sidewalk, trying to get back to our hotel, I was muttering and mumbling and everything else. And I guess finally I said, I just can't believe you didn't say something. He said, I started to, honey, but as we both know, I don't know the style in New York City. <laughs>